Hey everybody, Brad the Italian here, and today we're going to be answering an age-old question that everybody always asks me whenever they find out that I'm a dog trainer. So what is this age-old question that always pops up every time I announce that I'm a dog trainer? Well, it's a bit of a sensitive topic, it's a bit of a funny topic, it's, is my dog racist? Now to simply put it, no. No dog is racist. All dogs pick up behavioral patterns from things that are going on around them or things that have happened to them. So, for example, what I mean is if a dog happens to get into a dog fight with like a Border Collie, a Great Dane, a Doberman or anything like that, they may be more wary of that dog. So if they have a negative experience with somebody, they might have a negative connotation to them. If you remember from my video last Tuesday where I said the dog I was trying to greet didn't like men with beards, that's kind of the same thing. It's just those are the factors that the dog picked up on from the last person with a beard or the last man with a beard that approached them. So the last thing that that dog probably remembers is that a man with a beard either scared them or hurt them and so they don't trust men with beards. So that's the really simple explanation as to why does your dog not feel comfortable with blank person or blank race or something like that is that maybe something negative happened and they connotate it to that's everything now. Everything that, that scared me or hurt me is associated with this person or people. However, this is also why dog training is important. I'll always say it in every video why dog training is important. Dog training helps introduce the dog to new people on a constant basis. So if you take them to a dog park or you take them somewhere fun to the beach, they get to experience a whole new slew of people all the time, always, that are either coming up to them and petting them or that are giving them treats or that are just walking on past them. They get used to all those interactions. So that's a way to really reduce them being afraid of any particular set of people. But the other really important part of dog training is how you handle your dog when they're on leash. Uh, so a lot of dogs' behaviors are actually just things that they're trying to pick off of us through body language. And what I mean by that is, if you are walking down the street and you see somebody coming towards you and you tighten up on the leash, just out of like, oh, maybe we'll go over here to go around them, or maybe uh, you're worried that they might bark at the person so you tighten the leash, that automatically sends a signal to them that something is wrong. So they're automatically now starting to think, okay, something has changed in my environment, something has changed around us, I need to be on alert because mom or dad just pulled on my leash letting me know that something is about. And so what they might find as a trigger is the person walking towards them. And if that happens, then they might start associating, okay, this type of person is dangerous when, when, they're, when they're around. I need to be on the lookout for this type of person. So sometimes we send wrong signals to the dog on accident, just not knowing what the proper procedure would be. If I wanted to indicate to baby, my dog, that... Uh, we need to move over here or go somewhere. I actually tell her left and she'll turn left with me uh, or I'll say right, whatever it is. And I'll direct her where to go, but not by pulling on the leash because that might signify to her that something is wrong. However, if you also always redirect yourself away from certain people, then your dog will start to pick up on the idea that these type of people make you feel uncomfortable. There's not a lot of easy ways to dance around this subject, but basically it boils down to you might accidentally be making your dog seem racist due to some subconscious tendencies that you might have. So I've had to work with people who were very nervous around men and kind of pushed that behavior onto their dog and their dog became nervous of all men as well. It's very easy to push to your dog what you think is dangerous simply because dogs are very good at picking up on what the body language you're putting out there is. And as I've stated before, dogs are very good at pattern recognition and noticing that this happens every single time 
at this certain spot or with this certain type of person. So I kind of said what, what you can do to fix it. So ultimately, you just need to bring them around more people. You need to let them get comfortable around all types of people. And if there is a particular group like men with beards that make them feel uncomfortable, try to find a few guys with beards that are comfortable with giving your dog some treats. Now, of course, you want them to hold the treat in their hand. You want to hold it outstretched to the side, and you don't want them to look directly at the dog's eyes and allow the dog to approach them and take the treat out of their hand. If their nervous behavior around, say, men with beards is too severe and they may bite the person, then take them to a behaviorist. Do not try to fix it yourself. You don't want to have an accidental bite incident on your hand. But for the ultimate question, is my dog racist? No, not at all. No dog understands what race is. They all just put different objects and people and other dogs into little categories of dangerous, not dangerous. And through the miracle that is dog training, we're able to put more people, objects, and dogs into the not dangerous category than the dangerous category. But that is going to be it for this video. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you all on Thursday.